Would you please
The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these, of these two commandments, and all the law and the prophets. Amen. The invitation to confession and communion. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. We say together, Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk calmly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Amen. Please be seated and Keith and Eve are reading the policies. First lesson is taken from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 26, reading verses 1 to 11. When you have come into the land the Lord your God has given you as an inheritance to possess, and you possess it and settle in it, you shall take some of the first of all the fruit of the ground which you harvest from the land the Lord your God has given you. And you shall put it in a basket and go to the place the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name. You shall go to the priest who is in office at that time and say to him, Today I declare to the Lord your God that I have come into the land the Lord swore to our ancestors to give us. When the priest takes the heart of basket from your hand and sets it down before the altar of the Lord your God, you shall make this response before the Lord your God. A wandering Aramean was my ancestor. He went down into Egypt and lived there as an alien, few in number, and there he became a great nation, mighty and populous. When the Egyptians treated us harshly and afflicted us by imposing hard labour on us, we cried to the Lord, the God of our ancestors. The Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil and our oppression. The Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm with a terrifying display of power and with signs and wonders. And he brought us into this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. So now I bring the first of the fruit of the ground that you, O Lord, have given me. You shall set it down before the Lord your God and bow down before the Lord your God. Then you, together with the Levites and the aliens who reside among you, shall celebrate with all the bounty that the Lord your God has given to you and to your house. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Now stand to sing our graduate hymn, hymn number 37, Angel Voices Ever Sing, hymn number 37.
Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. When they found him on the other side of the lake, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly, I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate the fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written, He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. This is the Gospel of the Lord. marvellous things about living in Wiltshire is that you can see the stars. Yes, you can look up when the clouds are not there and see stars so clearly before you. And with the news that the United States has sent a missile into space to shift a meteorite 430 feet in diameter, I thought we might begin our harvest celebration with a reflection on the stars. A comet visited us in 1997. It was called Halley's Comet. It was in size 25 miles across. That is the distance between Cannes and the centre of Salisbury. It was a piece of volcanic rock that is going around the sun on an orbit. It has begun a journey in a large circle around the sun and it next visits us in 400 years time. A comet like Haley is like a dirty snowball and as it approaches the sun it gives off dust and gas. But despite the vastness of space, it will return to us in exactly the moment of time, the moment of time calculated because of the laws of nature and of science. There is a plan, and science gives us that plan. So for instance, it takes 10 months, or took 10 months for DART to go to the asteroid and shift it. NASA's DART spacecraft was launched in November of last year and has spent 10 months getting to its target despite the fact it travels into space at 14,000 miles per hour. Last week, it exploded on the surface of an asteroid. So I like to look at the sky. The stars are millions of years old, and they act like a clock. Yes, like a clock. We no longer have a clock on St. Mary's, and the clock faces over there. But it's a clock, and it's ticking. They tell you the time. So, looking at the stars, if you are an astronomer, they will tell you how old the universe is. 
how many millions of older planet it is, how fast it is travelling, when it was born, when it will come to an end. That is all because they go back to an original source at the beginning of the universe, which is called the Big Bang. And it shows us how old our universe is. So when you look up into the heavens and see the sun and the stars, think to yourself that it's like a clock, which points back to the time when God created the universe, points forward to a time when it will end. And the clock is ticking as the universe expands and we can remember that we all have a part to play in God's great creation plan. And the question this morning is, are you part of God's plan? Are we doing what God wants us to do? Harvest is a time to thank God for the part we play in his great world. We can see the plan that God had for creation for creation and what is his plan for you and we can become involved in that plan and in the purpose of God. The second delight of being in Wiltshire is the fact we are close to nature and the story of harvest is about nature and I think it's like it's all about roots. So some kind neighbour brought to us these two lovely vegetables. One, a root vegetable growing under the soil, a cabbage living on top of the soil. Vegetables that provide us with all that is so vital for life. Jesus told a parable about the sower. The sower goes forth to sow his seed and some fell on the soil that had thorns and the thorns Throttled the seed and it didn't grow. But then some fell on good soil. And for a long time the church has concentrated on the seed, which is the word of God in his parable. So we have a large pulpit in this church, reminding us of an era where the proclamation of God's word was all important. But when I was at university, I read a book parables of the kingdom written by C.H. John, where he said the parable is actually about the soil. It's either good soil or bad soil. It's either good soil or indifferent soil. The soil can either choke the seed or can allow it to grow 50-fold, 30-fold, 50-fold or 100-fold. And what is important today as we look at the world of creation is the soil. The soil that, grow, that takes the seed and grows it. And we have a relationship with that world which is particularly appropriate in places like Wiltshire. The relationship between people and the land has been highlighted in the work of King Charles III. We can, as people of an industrial age, choose to reject the link between us and the soil. We can get our food from supermarkets and we can get a sheer volume of all that the globe can create through its global supply chain. We can eat asparagus all year round, flown 6,000 miles from Peru in refrigerated plates. But I'm glad that Khan has taken it to actually relate to the soil. We are linked to the soil. And our lesson from Deuteronomy made that an aspect that we can thank God for that on this harvest Sunday. So we thank God for farmers. They produce the food we eat. They care for the land. They manage the countryside for our benefit. They help preserve local wildlife. British farmers produce 61% of the nation's food. Food and farming provide jobs to over 4 million people in the United Kingdom. Farmers look after 71% of Britain's landscape. So although we appreciate the international food supply chain, we also think today of our rootedness in the soil of Wiltshire. Plants, fruit needs to be well rooted in the soil where they are set. 
and from the soil they draw nourishment. If you uproot the plant and place it elsewhere, then they may or may not flourish. So uprooting of the plant is vital, and we thank God for it on Harvest Sunday. But as well as thinking of rootedness, we also think of the idea of sharing, which is today why our gifts go to the Calm Food Bank. The text from the Old Testament this morning set out a relationship between land and people, as I've said. But it also pointed out the need to share. So it talked about the alien in the community with which the people of God should share. Are they from Syria? Are they from Afghanistan? Where are the aliens in our community today? And here I share a little bit of my experience of the Middle East. Uh, every morning uh, I used to get up and I was a teacher in a school in Beirut. And we used to share bread together. And then at uh, 11 years we used to get up and have bread as well. And this time we would have Turkish delight cooking the bread. But the bread was like this. It wasn't Sainsbury's or it wasn't a brown loaf that is sliced. It's unleavened bread. In Arabic it's called chubbiz. And in terms of the Hebrew celebration of Passover, it was called mitzvah. And bread in the Middle East has to be shared. It has to be broken and shared. And when Jesus came to our home when he was in fear of his life, he set up a service where we would remember the way he shared bread. He took bread, broke it, and shared it. And as he explained what he was doing, he said, I am the bread of life that comes down. In the person of Jesus, God has shared himself. We remember that every time we take communion, every time we take the bread, break it, and share it. And this is where the community of the church gets its intimacy from. Closeness and love for each other, because God has shared himself with us. Something happens to enable friendship, face-to-face -face relationships in the church that he has made. And we are to imagine that these are living relationships. Relationships that can be shared with those who are lonely, those who are in need. So today, we remember the glories of living in Wiltshire, the stars in the sky, our rootedness in the community. And we also remember the glories of being part of this church at St. Mary's, where bread is shared daily, weekly, in remembrance of the way in which God's life, the creator of the universe, shared his life with us in the person of Jesus and set up this service, the Eucharist, where we can give thanks for him as we indeed share in his great nature. The universe was created with this big bang, a huge explosion of energy which is still with us in the skies and around us today. But the person who created that big bang is with us also in bread and wine. And as God the Father be ascribed as his most just and you all might, majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Now stand to confess our faith in the words of the Lord. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of man and earth, of all the nations seen and unseen. We believe in one God, the Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of God, God from God, light from light. True God from true God, the God of some days, the one being with the Father, 
through this whole thing is all right. For us, for our salvation, we thank God. Whilst this knowledge of the Holy Spirit is the Lord of Jericho, and whilst the same time, for our sake, we stood beside the Lord's heart. He suffered there on the way back. On the third day, he put him to stay in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and to see him from the heart of heaven. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord of the Lord Christ, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who is the Father and the Son who is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and solid church, who is not only the baptism of forgiveness of sins, who is under the resurrection of death, in union with Christ Jesus and in the power of the Spirit, we turn to prayer to the purpose and mercy of God. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you that through your church you generously provide for our spiritual needs. We pray for all who serve and worship in your church, especially remembering those whose faith is being challenged at this time. We pray for all who are spiritually hungry today. Bread of life, feed us by your spirit. Loving God, we thank you for the wonders of your creation. We pray for all who work to protect the beauty and sustainability of your planet for future generations. And remember those who are currently suffering due to natural and man-made disasters around the world. Especially those affected by recent floods and the excessive heat spells. In particular, we hold the people of Pakistan before you. <coughs> and we pray for refugees fleeing war. Bread of life. Loving God, we thank you for the harvest. We thank you for all who work to provide us with good food. We pray for those in our society and here in Khan whose larders are empty. We ask you to bless the work of the food bank and to inspire us to work for change so that food banks become redundant. Bread of life. Jesus, Father, Loving God, we thank you for the love we share with our families and friends. We pray for all who work in counselling and befriending. And remember those who are struggling with family splits and loneliness. We pray for all who are hungry for loving relationships. Bread of life, feed us by your spirit. Loving God, we thank you for the opportunities we have to challenge and feed our minds. We pray for those who work in education. Give them wisdom and patience. We pray for all who are denied the opportunity of going to school and are hungry to learn. Bread 
to the blood. Feed us by your Spirit. Loving God, we thank you for all who seek to bring healing and support to those who suffer from physical and mental illnesses. We especially remember those coming to terms with a devastating diagnosis and the prospect of future treatment. We pray for all who hunger for good health for them. We hold before you those known to us who are unwell. And from our parish list, we name Jackie Annis, Gordon Crook, Baby Pally Davy, Steve Ferris, Jennifer Fenton, Alex Grenfell, Cheryl Heaton, John Keller, Gough Morris, Nicola Rigby, Sophie Tibbetts, Thomas Christopher Connor. Curtis and Thomas. Bread of life, feed us by the God of eternity, we thank and bless you for our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, the bread of life. We hold before you all who are struggling with bereavement. We remember with thanksgiving those who have died recently and name Barbara Farnish, Brian Rawlings and John Selby. Bread of life, feed us by the soul. Lord of the harvest, the bread of life. Open our eyes to the spiritual and physical needs that surround us. Make us ready and willing to be neighbours in your harvest today. Merciful Father, I send these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Turn to the, uh, to the exciting pastoral point in this service, which is to read the banns of marriage for a couple who are planning to get married later in the year. So I published the banns of marriage between Daniel Leonard Peters, single of this parish with a qualified connection with St. Lawrence Kilmartin, and Tabitha Alice Lockley, single of this parish with also a qualified connection with St. Lawrence Kilmartin. This is for the third time I'm asking if any of you have any cause why these persons should not marry each other. We want to keep their now. But we wish uh, Tabitha and Daniel every success in their married life together and we pray for them. Heavenly Father, bless this couple who are to be joined together in Christian marriage. Prepare them by your grace for the life they are to share together. May they abide in your love and peace all the days of their life. For the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, would you please stand for the peace? We are the body of Christ. By one spirit we were all baptized into one body. Endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Peace of the Lord be always with you. And with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace.
now we sing our offertory hymn, hymn number 186, reminding us all the many faults that we've had through the prayers and through the address. Hymn number 186, for the healing of the nations, Lord, we pray with one accord.
accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and convey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself, made once for all upon the cross, we proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him our great high priest. This is our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us, we are bold to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his Son.
bring the remembrance that he died for you. And be not giving up on by faith with that sin.
Let us pray. Lord of the harvest, we join the abundant thanksgiving for your lovely creation and have shared in the bread and the wine of the kingdom. By your grace, plant within us a reverence for all that you have given us and make us generous and wise stewards of the good things we enjoy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We say together, Father of all, we give you thanks and praise. When we were still far off, you met us in your Son and water Son. Thine divinity you declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of war. May we who share Christ's folly live his little life. We who drink his cup and bring life to others. We who pursue in life give life to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us. So we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth may be prayed to all men. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. We now stand to sing our final hymn, hymn number six.
Go in peace, to love, and to serve the Lord.